Okay, uh, welcome back, everybody. I uh, just want to remind us what we did last time. Last time we talked about, what did we talk about last time? Uniform continuity. Yeah, so we've been talking a bit about what it means for a function to be continuous. And you saw many definitions of continuity. And uh, one of them was a metric definition. So it basically said that uh, a function is continuous means that close enough points get mapped to close points. So if in the target you want to be epsilon apart from uh, the image of a point f of p, then in the domain you want to be delta, at most delta apart from p, right? Okay. Now, of course, for a general function the, uh, in the domain, that target delta might depend on the choice of point p. Okay, and the whole idea of uniform continuity is that that delta doesn't depend on p. Okay, so the function uniformly spreads things apart, things that are no more than delta apart get sent to things that are no more than epsilon apart, no matter where you are in the space over here. Okay, okay good. So um, that was uh, the, the idea of, of uniform continuity. Today I want to say a little bit, in the first part of this lecture anyways, about uh, discontinuous functions. And you might wonder, what in the world is there to say about discontinuous functions? They're just functions that aren't continuous. Yeah? Okay, well, it um, uh, turns out there, there's actually more interesting behavior than just saying that a function's not continuous. There's a lot of interesting things you could explore. And the, the first... Uh, example of a function that's not just not continuous, but highly discontinuous is uh, something we'll call the Dirichlet function. So uh, it's a function that's, in fact, not continuous everywhere. Okay? Very simple uh, example of a function, however. So we'll define it to be, uh, let's say, um, f of x is 1, if x is, um, if x is rational, and let's let the function be 0 if x is uh, not rational. And so you can see what this function looks like. It's basically um, either 1 or 0, and you can see all the places where it is 1. It's 1 at lots of places. <laughs> And it's 0 at a lot more places. OK, so rationals uh, are, zero, uh, are 1, and irrationals are 0. Okay. Now, you can con convince yourself that f is not continuous anywhere at any, at any p. Why is that? Give me a, just a, a brief. Uh, argument? Emil? Okay, good. So a very easy way to see this is no matter what point you pick, if you take a ball around it, that's an open ball, it'll contain rational and irrational points, right? So whatever the, uh, what, what, where's that, uh, where's its image going to be, it's going to contain points that are close to 1 and close to 0. So if you pick epsilon less than uh, a half, then you will have trouble uh, satisfying the definition of continuity. OK? Good. So this is clearly not continuous. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a mildly interesting function. OK? OK. Um, this one may be a little more interesting. Suppose I did the following. Let's um, consider uh, the following example. So this is the one that actually you're going to explore in your homework. It's another example of what's a kind of Dirichlet function. But I'm going to, um, let's define it to be 1 over q if x is rational of the form p over q in lowest terms. Hmm, a little more interesting. 
Okay. And let's define it to be zero if it's irrational. So if uh, x is irrational. Okay. Well, how's this function behave? Let's see. Help me out. What is this function's behavior at uh, zero? Lowest terms? Zero over one is the low. Yeah, so its value should be what? One. OK. Good. What is its value at one? One over one is one. Good. What is its value at um, a half? A half. What about its value at three halves, if I were to do that? Half, OK. OK. What about, uh, let's do the quarters. How about at the, at the one quarter and three quarter? Yes, it's a quarter in both of them, yes? In fact, it'll be a quarter even at five fourths, too, yes? Would you agree the stuff beyond one kind of looks like the stuff between zero and one? So I'm just going to, I'll stop thinking about what's going on there. But OK. Um, let's see, what about a third? A third is here. OK, yes, you're right. And two thirds also be behave similarly, yes? OK, interesting. Um, OK, well, it's a very curious function. Um, what about, oh, let's just do a little, more, a few more examples. How about an, uh, uh, an eighth here? And what about one eighths and three eighths? And five eighths, and seven eighths, etc. Okay, do you get the picture here? So this function uh, has a different value for different rationals based on the size of its denominator in lowest terms. It's a very cool function. What do you notice? Uh, let's see. Um, if I take any particular value. How many times does this thing go above that value if this value is somewhere bigger than zero? Only finitely many times, right? OK. Oh, interesting. So um, ooh, very interesting. So if, if my target were to, 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 to look at an epsilon ball around zero, suppose I look at an epsilon ball around zero. How many times does this function leave the epsilon ball around zero? Finitely many times. No matter what epsilon is, yes? Would you agree? Oh, OK. So this function, what is it doing at the rationals? Well, it's doing something non-zero. And would you agree, it's, it's pretty clear at, at the rationals this thing is not continuous. What's happening at the irrationals? At the irrationals, let's take an irrational value here. How about um, this point right here? Um, square root of 2 minus 1. There. What's happening at this, at this point? Well, its value is what? 0, yes, indeed. And is there a neighborhood around it which will land in this target epsilon window? If there's only finitely many times it exceeds? Yeah, what neighborhood? How small are you going to make delta? Well, there are finitely many rationals where it exceeds. So take the, 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 minimum, <laughs> the minimum distance between that. Ah, so you have a delta ball for every epsilon. So this, this function is um, the amazing property that it is actually uh, while it's discontinuous at all rationals, it's actually amazingly continuous at all irrationals. An amazing function. So in fact, you see the set of discontinuous